Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Fund of Family. In this video, I'll be going to derive frequency equation for a stable multivibrator using operational amplifier. Before you see this video, I request you to go through my last video based on a stable multivibrator using operational amplifier in which I have explained you two cases of a stable multivibrator. In first case, I have explained symmetric a stable multivibrator and in second case, I have explained asymmetrical a stable multivibrator. Here I'll be deriving frequency for both of this multivibrator. So first of all, I'll be deriving frequency equation for symmetrical a stable multivibrator. So here one should know C with symmetrical a stable multivibrator frequency equation that is purely based on voltage at capacitor that is voltage V2 and I have explained in working C V2 that varies in between minus V1 to plus V1 and plus V1 to minus V1 and based on this time constant frequency will be there. I will derive complete frequency equation step by step. First of all one should know what is the voltage across capacitor. Let me explain you that. So voltage across capacitor that is Vc that is equals to initial voltage across capacitor into e to the power minus t by time constant here time constant is rf into c if you observe capacitor you see if you observe this capacitor that is charging via rf and c so time constant is rf into c right so here voltage across capacitor that is vc is equals to initial voltage into e to the power minus t by rf into c plus final voltage into 1 minus e to the power minus t by rf into c. Now here as I have told you this is vc which is voltage across capacitor. This vi that is initial voltage across capacitor and this vf that is final voltage across capacitor. See here first of all you need to understand what has to be the value of vc, vi and vf. Let us try to understand that if you observe see here if I consider T on time period so for T on time period V out voltage is plus V voltage. So for T on time period this small t that is T on at that time V out is plus V voltage. At that time here if you observe initial voltage V i across capacitor so that is minus V1 right. So let me explain you what is the value of it. See here initial voltage across capacitor that is Vi that is minus V1. Now what is V1? I have explained you V1 value that is happening as per here feedback voltage right. So that is V into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. So here you will be observing initial voltage Vi that is minus V1 and that is minus V into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. Now let us try to understand other voltages. Here if you observe see Vf that is final voltage. So final voltage that is what the voltage applied to capacitor by which it should get charged. So here we have V plus voltage at output side. So if you observe capacitor if you observe capacitor so that is getting charged by final voltage over here. So that is V plus voltage during T on. You see during T on, during T on final voltage should be V plus voltage right. So here I am mentioning Vf that is final voltage that has to be plus V voltage. Now what is this Vc voltage? So Vc voltage that can go up to plus V1 only right. Vc voltage that can go up to plus V one voltage only. So here let me note it down. So these are the voltages that I just need to substitute in this equation. Let me substitute those voltages first. See I have placed Vc that is equals to plus V1 voltage that is this. I have placed Vi that is equals to minus V1 voltage that is equals to this and Vf that is equals to plus V voltage right. Now we need to simplify this equation. So if you observe this equation carefully see this V that is getting cancelled from all the terms 
Now what I'll do is I'll be going to take this R1 by R1 plus R2 term means constant term on one side and e to the power term on other side. So here we have R1 divided by R1 plus R2 and here we have plus 1 on other side it will be minus 1 that is equals to now you see from this term and from this term we can have e to the power minus t on divided by rfc common right so here you see here i am taking minus of r1 divided by r1 plus r2 and minus 1 common from this here we will be having minus t on divided by rf into c now we need to simplify this equation so if you simplify this you just do cross multiplication so here r1 minus r1 minus r2 so here minus r2 divided by r1 plus r2 will be there and if you simplify this then if you do cross multiplication then minus r1 minus r1 minus r2 means minus 2 r1 minus r2 divided by r1 plus r2 will be there into e to the power minus t on divided by rf into c right now if you observe see this term that is getting cancelled and this negative sign that is getting plus at both of the side so now we can further simplify this so if you take this on other side you will be having r2 divided by 2 r1 plus r2 that is equals to e to the power minus t on divided by rf into c now e to the power minus is there so if you take e to the power plus then on other side we need to reverse this term so that will be 2 r1 plus r2 divided by r2 now take natural log at both of the sides so if you take natural log then now this will go on front and ln of e that is equals to 1 so you can say t on divided by rf into c that is equals to natural log of 2 r1 plus r2 divided by r2. So we can say t on time period over here that is equals to rf into c into ln of 2 r1 plus r2 divided by r2. So this is t on time period that we have right now see this is what we have derived this is what we have derived for symmetrical case so in symmetrical case t on and t off time period that is same as per time constant rf into c right so here we can say for symmetrical case t on that is equals to t off right so here based on this we can say total time period that is t on plus t off right and as both are same you can say total time period for one cycle that is twice of this right so that is 2 rfc into ln of 2 r1 plus r2 divided by r2 that is what total time period now once you have total time period for one cycle we can have frequency right what is the frequency frequency f is 1 divided by t so based on that one can have frequency equation that is 1 divided by 2 r f c into ln of 2 r1 plus r2 divided by r2 so this is frequency equation which we have this is standard frequency equation for symmetrical a stable operational amplifier right now i am going to explain you frequency calculation for asymmetrical a stable operational amplifier so if you want to calculate frequency for a stable operational amplifier then if you observe here see this is a stable operational amplifier so with this a stable operational amplifier see t on time period that is this and in this t on time period output is v plus where time constant is happening as per rf1 into c right otherwise the rest calculation that is same so here 
if you want to understand same equation for asymmetrical adjustable op amp then here your t on time period t on time period that is happening as per now rf1 into c where you see this rf1 resistance that is coming into the picture as d1 is on right and during t of rf2 will come into the picture so here t on time period equation that will be same as this only instead of rf you will have to write rf1 right and if you want to calculate t of time period then that will be rf2 into c ln of 2r1 plus r2 divided by r2 right based on that one can have total time period over here so total time over here that one should know that is t on plus t off so based on that one can have t that is equals to now you see ln of this term is common so i can write rf1 into c plus rf2 into c into natural log of 2r1 plus r2 divided by r2 and if you want frequency then frequency is what frequency is 1 by t so based on that here we can have frequency that is 1 divided by this so that is how one can have equation of frequency right here there are few more basics that one should know see this is equation of frequency and in this equation of frequency there are few things which is bit complicated like ln of 2r1 plus r2 divided by r2 in this equation also we are having ln of 2r1 plus r2 divided by r2 right so if you want to have further simplification over here then you can assume few basics over here let me explain you what we need to assume here see if we assume if we assume that this value of r1 if r1 is equals to 0.86 of r2 in that case this term ln of 2r1 plus r2 divided by r2 that will become 1 so if it is becoming 1 in that case you can say frequency that can be simplified as per 1 divided by 2rf into c and same assumption this same assumption that we can take over here with asymmetrical case e1 so in asymmetrical case if you assume this in that situation you can have frequency equation that is 1 divided by rf1 into c plus rf2 into c right in short you can say this is 1 divided by c into rf1 plus rf2 so this is how we can have calculation of frequency for a stable multi vibrator with symmetric and asymmetric case with asymmetric case this is simplified equation but this equation is coming with the assumption of r1 is equals to this otherwise final equation is this right so that is how one can use these equations to have designing of a stable multi vibrator if you want to design square wave generator then you can use this equation for symmetrical square wave generation one can use this equation in which if you substitute the value of r1 and r2 as per this then one can have final frequency formula 1 by 2 rfc right and if you have some questions based on different duty cycles then duty cycles that one can define based on rf1 and rf2 value if rf1 is larger then duty cycle will be more than 50 percentage if you observe here in waveform see in waveform here rf1 that is lower than rf2 that's why this t1 is lower than t off right so based on rf1 and rf2 value one can define duty cycle as well for example if i say you want to design duty cycle of 0.25 then rf1 value that you will have to select as per the scale where rf2 should be greater right so in that situation you will have to use first duty cycle equation that duty cycle is what that is 
टी ऑन डिवाइड बाई टी ऑन प्लस टी ऑफ राइट सो इफ यू वॉन्टेड टू हैव सम ड्यूटी साइकिल देन यू हैव टू प्लेस ड्यूटी साइकिल ओवर हियर लेट अस इट इज पॉइंट टू फाइव सो हियर टी ऑन विल बी हैविंग ऑल द थिंग्स कॉमन ओनली आर एफ इज डिफरेंट राइट सो हियर दिस इक्वेशन दैट विल बी हैविंग रिलेशन एज पर आर एफ वन डिवाइड बाई आर एफ वन प्लस आर एफ टू सो एज पर दिस रिलेशन यू विल हैव टू सिलेक्ट वैल्यू ऑफ आर एफ वन एंड आर एफ टू सो दैट यू कैन हैव दिस ड्यूटी साइकिल एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट यू कैन डिजाइन ए सिमेट्रिकल स्क्वायर वेल राइट विद डिफरेंट ड्यूटी साइकिल so this is what you have to take care of when you design a stable multi vibrator i hope you have got the point still if anything that you like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video